So now we're looking into Hebron, not from 3,700 years ago, but let's move a thousand years into the future from then. And right here in back of us, you see these pillars here. These pillars are part of a house that was built here during the days of King Hezekiah, 2,700 years ago. We're talking about the days of the first temple. Yeah, the pillars right here in front of us. This was called, in Hebrew they call it uh, Bait Arba Merchavim, which means a four-room house. It was fairly standard, maybe even a little nicer than the regular houses here, uh, and it was used uh, then as a house. Now, during that period of time, uh, there was a war going on between King Hezekiah and a guy named Sancharif. Uh, Sancharif was upset because he came from Assyria because King Hezekiah stopped paying him taxes. Uh, and as a result, they had a war. And uh, during the time of the war, so they had to have a place to store food for the army. And here in Hebron was a place where they utilized for food storage for the army. Now, during, uh, they used to have the, the foods, the grains and like that, in clay jars so big. On the side of the jar was a handle. And on the bottom of the handle was a little seal. Actually, if we take a little stroll over here, you can see this is one of those seals. Now you see it looks like a bird or a beetle. This one has two wings. They have them that have four wings. And uh, this was used to identify the property as belonging to the king, to the kingdom itself. And on the top of the seal, it had the word in, a, uh, in Hebrew, the lamelech, belonging to the king. That identified as property. These may have been used for, for tax purposes. Underneath the seal, was another word which identified the place where it was being stored. And so we have down here. Now there were several different storage locations uh, in Judea, uh, but these seals, the five of them, including this one that were found here at these excavation sites, all on the top say Lamelech, belonging to the king, and underneath in ancient Hebrew, the word Hebron. And when the archaeologists found these, they said, if anybody had any doubts as to whether this is the authentic biblical Hebron, those doubts have all been erased. We have positive proof that Jews have lived here since the days of Abraham. This was found here. I photographed this. This is today in a museum up in Kiryat Arba. Uh, and it's, it's, it's tangible proof of the Jewish existence here. There are those that say that Hebron uh, isn't Jewish and that the Jews shouldn't be here. We're an occupying power, of course. Uh, this is 2,700 years old, which is about almost a thousand years before Muhammad was born. Uh, so, you know, that's the way it is. Now, if we talk a little bit about the neighborhood that we're in right now, uh, the property here, where today we have living about, uh, about 15 or 16 families, perhaps a little bit more than that, uh, the land here was bought by a Jew named Rabbi Chaim Bajayo back in the early 1800s. Uh, for the then Jewish community that was here in Hebron. Uh, we were able to come up here and start to repopulate this area uh, in the summer of 1984. We had seven of these mobile homes. In Hebrew, they call them karavanim. We had seven, of the seven families here, and that's the way things remained for a number of years. Um, in 1998, the end of August 1998, you can look at the camera. The end of August in 1998, there was a terrorist attack here. An Arab got through the back window of one of the homes over here in the middle of the night, uh, and he stabbed to death Rabbi Shlomo Ra'anan, uh, the 63-year-old 60 grandson of Rabbi Cook. And as a result of that, uh, the then Prime Minister, Netanyahu, promised that we'd be able to build, get out of these things. But we knew that this is Tel Hebron. If you build on the ground, then whatever is underneath is gone. So we brought in the Israeli Archaeological Authority. They dug, found what they found, and when they were finished working together with the uh, Archaeological Authority, uh, the building here was designed uh, and built uh, so that today, uh, actually, if you want to, to try to, to get, get a, 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 a modern name for this neighborhood, I would call this neighborhood Tel Aviv. This is the real Tel Aviv. Where does the word Tel Aviv come from? Tel is old, Aviv is spring, is new. That's what the name of Herzl's book was, Old New Land, the old land and the new land. So here we have old new, we have the old, 
and we have the new. This is what Tel Aviv is really all about. 